right, welcome to EWN on the couch, where we catch up with your favorites both on and off the field. And today we are at a very special place called the Ultimate Rugby Experience, uh, the largest <coughs> privately owned collection of rugby memorabilia, a special place for a special fund, the Players Fund, celebrating over 40 years, um, not today, but this year. And we're very excited to be part of the fundraiser today as EWN. And who better to share it with than former Springbok captain, social media influencer, and now chairman of the Players Fund, Jean de Villiers. Thanks for joining us on the couch. Thanks, Katua. I can think of many more people that would be better than me to get here, but uh, it is a, Why, it is a privilege and honor to be here. What, as a chairperson? No, no, like I can just think of a lot of people that could be better. <laughs> um, well, we want you, so thank you for joining us. No, thank you. Uh, tell me, how, how's the life in John de Villiers? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, it's been so pretty. So rugby commentator, father, husband, all of that. Yeah, not in that order, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's been good. Um, obviously, life after rugby, you know, it's something that I think everyone that plays the game professionally, and uh, quite a few of the guys sitting in the room as well, you know that it's a, uh, it's a reality. It's going to be there at some stage in your life. You just don't know when. Um, and the closer it gets, the closer it creeps up to you, uh, or certainly when it, when it crept up to me, still I, I, I knew that I wasn't prepared for it. So now having been in that uh, retirement role, retirement from rugby, for three years I think I've, I've initially, or well eventually f uh, found my feet. Um, I am extremely busy at the moment, but I think it's a good busy and, and I'm lucky to be able to be busy. So how did you find your feet? Uh, who or what helped no, I just you looked down there. and I saw my feet, so it was quite easy to find you know, it. No, I had a feeling you were going to say that. You're going to take it for but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that, that I think a lot of professional sportsmen struggle with, um, and to be honest, so did I. Mm. I think where, where I was lucky was that um, you know, I, I built relationships while I played rugby, uh, not knowing where that will take me, where that will bring me, uh, or what I will get out of it. Um, but by doing that, I was able to, uh, to find a job with, with Supersport um, and find a job with, a, with another company called Citadel, where I am now full-time employed. So if, if you go into something, if you go knock on someone's door and say, hey, you know, it, it's me, John DeVille. I played professional rugby for 17 years. I don't have any tertiary education. I don't really have a skill that can add that much value to your business. Um, would you mind employing me? You know, then it's uh, it, that's a difficult conversation sometimes. So, so luckily through the relationships I built, uh, I was able to make that transition at a stage where I could still add value to the business while I was playing from a brand point of view. Mm. Uh, and in that transition, you know, learn the skills that can add value to the business post retirement. You are chairman of the you chairman of the players fund. When you think of the players <coughs> fund, what pops to your mind first? You know what? Um, when I think of when I think of the Players Fund, I actually, and I don't know why, but I, I think of two people. One Mono Duplessis, and actually the second one, and he's here, is Efsia, Efsia Smith, and one of our trustees still. But when I had started playing for uh, for Western Promise and the Stormers, you know, he was already very actively involved. I don't know why, but when I think of the fund, I think of of him and and Mono who started it. So. Um, Having been involved a little bit more now um, over the last two years or so, you realize the value of the mm. fund. As a player, I always knew that they did fantastic work. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know exactly what that was. And, and when you play a sport like rugby where the risks are so high and where sometimes these injuries happen, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable to know that there are people that will look after you. You know, rugby, rugby's got this, this brotherhood or, or whatever you want to call it. And, um, and I suppose the, the, the fund fulfills such a big, a big part of that, bringing people together, um, making people love rugby, but taking care of people that's yeah. been affected in a bad way by rugby. So, you know, those that are on the ground busy with that and managing all of that and and their names are Gail, Tori, and Kim. Um, you know, they just do an unbelievable uh, job. So what's your role in it at the moment? No, no, I just do interviews like this. <laughs> uh, 
And, Come on. And it's, it's, it's very easy, you know. So they do the, they do the hard work. For, for us as, as trustees and, and the fund, um, as you mentioned earlier, the fund is 39 years old, going on 40 years. It, it plays a pivotal role. And established by, by uh, Mornay Duplessis and a couple of his friends and teammates back then, um, but it's important to keep that going for the mm. next generation to take over. Um, and, and I suppose that's what we are doing at the moment. We're in a World Cup year, and I know Japan is probably a swear word in the de Villiers household. Can we? Why would that be? I, I <laughs> okay, we won't, we won't mention that game. Um, I, I don't even know what game you're talking about. Okay. Um, no, it's fine. Okay, exactly, what game? Yes. Okay. Um, so what do you, how do you feel about the Springbox prep at the moment? Look, I think we all, we're all feeling extremely... Um, Optimistic after the weekend's game against Australia, uh, a fantastic performance by the team, and a, and a great result. Um, and, and and not just the result itself, but you know some of the players really putting up their hands and, and showing that we've got mm. depth in positions where we where we might have thought that we that we didn't. So I think that's a that's a massive positive. And and I must be honest, I think um, um, uh, Rassi Rasmus has got an extremely difficult task to select 31 players for the World Cup because it's going to be very difficult to cut it down to only 31. So realistically, where do you think we'll end up at the World Cup? Well, Hopefully. nobody knows. Nobody knows. Um, <laughs> Give us your... I guess you're drawing, you're giving me a hard time. No, tonight, it's, uh, no it's the world. You know, it, it is... It is I, I, I can't see into the future. We need to get our bets in. Um, I, I'm, like I, I think it's, it will be the most competitive World Cup ever. So many teams that can actually go on and win it. And I think so many teams that can that can upset another team. So call it a, a Japan moment, uh, if you want to if you want to call it that. Do you I think want we'll to? have quite a few Japan moments in Japan this year. Well, Jean de Villiers, Captain Obvious, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on the couch, and thank you for what you're doing for the Players Fund uh, as chairperson and assisting the lovely ladies that are putting in other work as well every day for being a cool father and just being a cool, a cool oak all round and will be able to engage with us tonight. So thank you so much for joining us on the couch. Thanks, Katrina. Here we go, Edomir on the couch. Thank you very much. <laughs>